look at how to solve these problems. You'd have them done um, already. Um, we're going to go through these. So one thing, you should have a couple of things. You should have this equation sheet, uh, which tells you the uh, information about the variables in these equations. And it gives you the equation that you should have gotten from the videos that you saw. Um, this equation right here, you can uh, adding a couple things to the, this equation sheet. So take out this equation sheet, you can add a couple things. This half-life equal to 0 0.693 over the decay constant. Of course, we can rearrange this equation for the decay constant. We get this equation. Those are the four main equations that we're going to be using. Some, uh, something else you should add is that um, the units for uh, decay rate are curies or decays per second or Baccarel's. One curie is the same as 3.7 times 10 to the second decays per second. I think that's written on one of the problems on the problem packet, which is the same thing as 3.70 times 10 to the 10th seconds to the minus 1. Again, a back row is the same as a decay per second. Another thing to take note is this, this A activity, the number of atoms per time. You take a look at this equation. This is the number of atoms at some time period, and this is the initial number of atoms that you have. We take both sides of the equation divided by time, we get the activity, number of atoms per unit of time, the initial number of atoms per unit of time. So these two equations are basically the same equations, just whether you're given the number of atoms that you have or you're given the activity. This is atoms, this is number of atoms per time. We're just dividing time on both sides of the equation to get the activity. So I'll give you a little background about that information. Okay? Now, let's go, we're gonna go through this. And I have the solutions here, so I'm going to talk through these solutions. You can check them uh, as you uh, go. Let's take a look, see what we have. Again, we have a radial, the information that we're given is that the decay constant is 1 times 10 minus 7 per second, or decays per second. The number of atoms we're starting with is 1 times 10 to the 10th. Time is uh, one year, and we want to know the number of atoms that are left after that time period. I'm just going to have some consistent units. I'm going to put convert this years to seconds, 3.15 times 10 to 7 seconds. That's a nice, useful unit uh, to remember. And so these values are, or these variables are related in this uh, decay equation. And we are given the initial number of atoms. We know the decay constant. Sometimes we have to calculate the decay constant, but we'll get that in a little bit. And the time is 3.15 times 10 to 7 seconds. You, do that calculation, you get 4.29 times 10 to the 8 atoms. All right, let's go to number two. Number two, we're given the decay constant, again, the time, and the initial activity in curies. Again, this is the activity, which is simply the number of atoms per time. We want the um, uh, activity after two and a half years. Again, I'm going to convert, have some consistent units, I'm going to convert 2.5 years to seconds, which is 7.88 times 7, seven seconds. Again, this is the equation we're using. Since we have activity, we're going to use the activity equation instead of the uh, number of atoms equation. And uh, we are solving for this activity after two and a half years, or 7.88 times 7, seven seconds. We put this information in. This is the initial activity, 1.14 curies times e to the negative 1 times to the minus 8 per second times 7.88 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Notice the seconds cancel. And just like it does up here, seconds cancel. And we're going to get the units of curies, 0.518. And we want to convert that to two decays per second. So we get 1.92 times 10 to the 10th decays per second, or 1.92 times 10 to the 10th seconds to the minus one. The same thing. Or we can put back or owls in there. We have those for the units. Now let's go to number three. It's getting a little more interesting here. We're given a mass of a sample of polonium 30, which is 30.00 grams per mole. You can put 30.0 grams per mole. Do that. Um, so we've given the mass, we know the molecular mass of polonium, the time, uh, or the half-life, is 2.50 minutes. We can convert that to seconds, so it's 1.50 times 10 to, seven, uh, 10 to the second seconds. And we want to know the activity at 10 minutes, we want to know the activity after 2 hours. Well, we know if we're given the half-life, we can figure out the constant because the equation for activity, the initial activity, is the constant times the number of atoms that we initially start with. So in order to use this equation, we're, we can calculate the number of atoms because we're given the mass. We can go with that mass. And using the molecular mass, this is the number of atoms that we're starting with. This is N, N naught. You can write that better. N naught, the number of atoms that we're starting with. 
So we have this value. But then we need the decay constant. Well, we're given the half-life. You're given the half-life, you can get the decay constant. We have the decay constant, you can get the half-life by this equation right here. So we use this equation to get that decay constant, 4.62 times 10 to the minus 3 per second. So we put that into this uh, activity equation based on the number of atoms with decay constant. And we get the um, activity to be 9.29 times 10, 10 to the 16th decays per second. But we want the activity in back or, or uh, curies. So we convert that to curies, get 2.51 times 10 to the 6 curies. This is the initial activity of the sample. An initial activity based on the number, initial number of atoms and the decay constant. But we want to know the activity after 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, that consistency is, I'm going to put six, that's 600 seconds here. You can do the conversion. So this is the activity equation. We know the initial activity, which we just solved for here. We know the decay constant we have there. Now we know the time. Put that in to this equation. We get that activity to be 1.57 times 10 to the fifth curies. That's the activity after 10 minutes. Again, you can pause this video anytime you want to to write the solution or correct your answers that you have. But then also we want the activity after two hours, or two hours is 7,200 seconds, so we have consistent units. So this is still the decay constant, the same decay constant, that doesn't change. The, um, I'm sorry, this is the uh, initial activity, doesn't change. This is the decay constant, it, so this constant is stays the same. The only thing that's changing between these two equations is the time period. This is now 7,200 seconds. We do that calculation, we get 8.98 to the minus nine curies. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going. Number four, the half-life of cobalt-60 is 5.27 years. Calculate the decay constant. It's a pretty straightforward one. Um, we're going to put the decay constant in terms of seconds, so I'm going to convert this years. You probably could calculate in years. It worked as 1.6 days. Notice we've already used the converted years to seconds so often. I'm just 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds is one year, so I'm going to use that conversion. We get 1.66 times 10 to the 8 seconds. We uh, are solving for the decay constant. This is the half-life, solving for the decay constant. We have 4.17 times 10 to the minus, that's a nine to the minus nine per second. It's a second to the minus one. Okay. Let's go to number five. We have a radioactive source of cobalt-60 and uh, contain 2.00 times 10 to the 15 atoms. So that's the initial number of atoms. Cobalt-60, you actually have to look up on uh, the uh, periodic, on the, uh, uh, the uh, information sheet here. Let's see if we can find cobalt 60 here. Cobalt, 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 cobalt. Cobalt 60. Here we go. Cobalt 60 right there. This half-life is, this is the half-life column, so cobalt 60, 5.2708, I think I rounded to 5.271. So that's where we get the half-life, 5.271 years. I'm converting that to seconds, using the conversion between seconds and years, 1.66 times 10 to 8 seconds. And determine the initial activity in curies of the source and the activity one year later. So we want the initial activity. Again, the initial activity is simply the decay constant times the initial number of atoms. We know the initial number of atoms. We have to get the decay constant. We look up the half-life of cobalt-60. So we can use this equation to get the decay constant, which is 4.17 times 10 to the minus 9. That's per second. And then we put that into the activity equation based on the number of atoms that we have and the decay constant. We determine this in decays per second. We can convert that to curies. Uh, 2.25 times 10 to the minus 4 curies. And then we want the activity after one year. One year is the same thing as 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds. We use uh, this activity equation uh, because we know the initial activity, which is 8.34 times 10 to the 6 uh, decays per second, or 2.25 times 10 to the minus 4 curies. If we want everything in curies, we can just use this for our units of curies for the initial activity. And then this is the decay constant, 4.17 times 10 to the minus 9 per second. And then the time for one year, 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds. The seconds cancel these per second. And we end up getting activity 1.97 times 10 to the minus 4 curies. And let's go to number 6. We know the mass of a 1 gram sample of phosphorus 32, phosphorus 32 is 30.0 grams per mole. 
and we can look up the uh, half-life from the table for phosphorus 32. Phosphorus 32 is here. The half-life is 14.262 days. That's where I get this number. I'm going to convert those days to seconds. 1.232 times 10 to the 6 seconds. And the total time is 60 days plus 9.5 hours. So this is the time 60 days, 9.5 hours. We convert both these to seconds. And um, we have a total time of 5.218 times 10 to the 6 seconds. How much phosphorus, this should be a capital P. How much phosphorus 32 remains after this time period? So we want to determine the number of atoms of phosphorus after the time period of 5.218 times 10 to the 6 seconds. We need to have, uh, we're going to use this equation. This must be the initial number of atoms. So I'm going to use, we have one uh, gram. We're going to convert that to number of atoms using the molecular mass and Avogadro's number. We get 1.88 times 10 to the 20 second atoms. This is, and not the initial number of atoms. Uh, we then use the, uh, um, we need, I'm sorry, we need to find the decay constant. We know the half-life, which is 1.232 times 10 to the 6 seconds. So we use this equation to get the decay constant, 5.63 times 10 to the minus 7 per second. We put all those numbers in this equation. We solve that. We get the number of atoms, 9.96 times 10 to the 20th atoms. We want to know how, many, how, many, how much stuff is left in grams. We usually measure how much phosphorus left in grams instead of atoms. So we're going to convert this to number of grams using Avogadro's number of molecular mass. We have 0 0.0530 grams. Then what is the activity of phosphorus 32 after this time period? In other words, now that we have this much mass, in other words, this time period has gone by, what's the activity? Well, we can use this activity equation. I almost use that equation, but you can use that, this activity equation because this is the number of atoms of phosphorus 32 at that time. We have that number, 9.96 times 10 to the 20 atoms, and we know the decay constant. So this is the number of atoms after this time period has occurred. So we just use this activity equation, and we get the activity 5.61 times 10 to the fourth teen decays per second. Put that in curies, 1.52 times 10 to the fourth curies. Another thing, I just want to talk about one more thing. If we want to know what fraction of a substance, a fraction of a substance that you start with, is n over n naught, and after one half life, that fraction is one half left. If you have two half lives, that's one half times one half, that's one fourth or 0.25 fraction of what's left over. If you have after three half lives, that's one half, one fourth times one half, which is one eighth, and so on. So if you want to know what fraction of a substance remains after so many half lives, you just multiply the number of half-lives together and get that fraction or that amount. Of course, 1 8 is 0.125 and so on. Okay, Just a little aside there, something for you to know. All right, uh, hopefully after that, if you have any questions, please email me. I'll try and answer them as best I can. And uh, should be really ready to take the quiz on Tuesday. For Tuesday, you can use uh, your notes, especially this uh, paper right here. Okay. That's it.